Today is a new day and God has new goodness for you today. I'm Angela Madden and I'm here with Matt today. Matt, we have a phenomenal program yes. ahead of us. Yes, I love it. I'm really excited because coming up in just a moment, Tom is joined by Pastor Mac Hammond of Living Word Christian Center. He's the host of a program, The Winner's Way, which is seen actually right here on Cornerstone Television. Pastor Mac has been planning churches all around the world and is trying to get as many people saved as possible. It's incredible to see how God is using him to bring people to Christ. Angela, I love hearing testimonies of how God just transforms people's lives, especially when yes. they don't realize they could be used to a certain capacity, but yes. then all of a sudden they start transforming nations and reaching thousands of people for Jesus. I mean, that's what yes. he called us to do. That's exactly right. To not despise these small yeah. beginnings. Also, coming up later, we will reveal the winner of this week's Stump the Viewer contest. We'll find out who gets to claim a pair of tickets to see Amy Grant in concert. Make sure you stick around to see if you're the lucky winner. Wow. I'm excited. All I'm saying. I mean, tickets to Amy Grant. Why yeah. did I get some? Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's just say whoever wins... I'll help you out. Be the winner yeah, yeah. if you'll pitch me the other ticket. We'll go together. We'll go together. Amy Grant. Have you listened to Amy Grant grown up? Oh, my gosh, yes. I mean, she's an OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely the OG. I'm, I'm so excited for whoever gets to gets those tickets, and I know that you're going to enjoy that concert. And also, we want to remind you that beginning this Monday, April 29th, Hope Today will be moving to a new start time. We will no longer be on at 9 a.m. or 1 p.m. Instead, you can now catch us weekdays at 3.30 30 p.m., 8 p.m., and 1 a.m. Hard questions will now be on on Wednesdays, Mondays, and Fridays at 9 a.m., and Sister to Sister on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. So once again, we'll see this change take place beginning this Monday, April 29th. Lots of changes. Yeah. Lots of good things. Mm -hmm. New time for us on Hope Today, 3:30 yeah. yeah, yeah, p.m. Yeah. Come on. Right now. when your you know your kids are getting home from school. And yeah. What a, what a perfect time. Yes. What a perfect time to tune in, especially when your kids are coming home from, sc from school. Yes. You need, you need a little bit of peace and hope to come into the household. I know I do. But hey, <laughs> let's now head over to Tom, who is joined by our special guest, Pastor Mac Hammond. Mac Hammond started Living Word Christian Center in 1980 with just 12 people. Now, after 40 years, that group of 12 has grown into a church body of more than 10,000 members. And it has a national and international media outreach called The Winner's Way. You see that on Cornerstone here, 1030 in the evening on Saturdays. Be sure to catch it. Pastor Mac joins us now to share his vision and tell us about the good things that are happening with the church. Pastor Mac, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. It's my privilege to, to be with you and a lot of good things happening. Well, All over the body of Christ, and some of that happens to be in our ministry. Most yes. exciting thing we're doing right now is global church planting. Yes. And uh, it's something that burns in me, and it's, you know, the current vision that the Lord has, has given us to emphasize in these next few years. So yeah. a lot's going on. That's, that's an incredible thing and a mo most important. You know, I've done a lot of short-term missions. So you did that full-time. And that's wonderful. Preach the gospel, see people come to the Lord. But they need established in a local body. They need, and tell me about what, uh, what you're doing uh, in that arena. Well, some years ago, uh, the Lord kind of began dealing with me about uh, Matthew 28, 19 from the Amplified. Because usually as a church, we did a lot of short-term missions trips. We'd send mm -hmm. teams overseas and pray with different people, get folks saved. But there was never a strategy for leaving a church. And then one day, I, you know, the Lord quickened to me, I believe, that Matthew 28, 19 said, ultimately, he wants us to make disciples of all nations. Right. And you can't disciple a nation without putting churches in it. A church is the way someone is discipled, grown up in the Lord. And so it just went off in me like a, a bomb. We needed to have a strategy for planning churches in as many places as we can. And he also spoke through another minister that time is short. We need to, you know, have a strategy that will do this quickly and deliberately. You know, in our short-term missions trips, we always thought and hoped that 
some of the folks that got saved might get together and do a home church or something like that. But we had no real strategy to do churches quickly and churches that would have an identity because we provided them with a building in their local community, which is a huge evangelistic tool. So our church planting scheme, our strategy is a better word, uh, is to take teams of people into a location that we have had contacts in mm -hmm. that we've been able to work with, uh, blitz the streets for a week, promote a crusade, and a church that we will leave there, uh, get as many people saved as we can during that interim, and then leave a church with a pastor that is doctrinally aligned with, with us. And, um, and then we go back on a repetitive basis to train and to mobilize them in their community as best we can. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. And um, it has really consumed my heart because it combines two of the greatest desires of my heart. I love to fly, flown all my life, started as a military pilot and then, uh, you know, through the first 10 years after active duty, started an air freight business, love it. Then I sold my interest in the business because the Lord told my wife and me to start a church. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did that then um, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so pastoring and flying are the two things that have defined my life, all of my life, and that I love both, very, both of these things very much. And he's brought them together now in a way I believe that is meeting the requirement of time is short, so we do this quickly, but we have a strategy to do it effectively. Mm -hmm. And so it's been an exciting time. Didn't mean to give you a sales pitch already here. <laughs> no, but. I love that sales pitch. That, that is wonderful. Tell me about uh, what's, what's been the results. I mean, finding a pastor, uh, putting them in a building, these are fantastic things. What's been the results of some of these churches? Oh, they're, they're going and growing, and uh, we're going back to the Dominican Republic where we have put four pastors in place in the last year and two or three months, as a matter of fact. And we're going to do a training session with them and, you know, and, uh, and uh, take them evangelizing in their communities. Uh, so, yes, you need, you need two basic elements. Do you just want me to talk or do you, would you rather lead with a question? No, that's just go right ahead. Go ahead and share. The way um, we did our prototype uh, church plant using this strategy years ago, uh, I took a jet star, which I'm type rated in, to, with a team of people uh, to Warsaw, Poland, uh, because it wasn't really great, wasn't really easy to get across the border and, uh, you know, to take an airplane into the Soviet Union at that point in time. So we took a van across the border. We had contacts in Grodna, Belarus, had someone on my staff whose parents lived there. And so they could set up things for us, get us permits, find interpreters. You need that contact wherever you go. But then we took a team of um, eight people on the Jetstar uh, into Grodna uh, via Warsaw, Poland, and then a van and we blitzed the streets for a week. We had had tracks made in the local dialects that were, you know, uh, for getting people saved, but also promoting uh, a crusade. We were gonna do that weekend. We'd rented a local theater and uh, then a church we intended to leave. And so in one week, we blitzed the streets, did a crusade. It was packed out, standing room only. 4,000 people got saved. We introduced our new pastors and we had rented a building for them to have their services in and bang. And that church is there after 15 years or more, it's doing well. And so this was our prototype. And so the key to me was to find contacts in these different nations. And we had some in our hemisphere in Central and South America. We have an Hispanic church that we started there in Minneapolis and their pastor knows everybody. So he's, you know, we've got contacts through him, a lot of places in South America. Mm -hmm. But a friend of mine is Andrew Womack. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And uh, I had asked Andrew about a year ago, a little over, uh, you know, because he's got 40 Bible schools in yes. other countries. That doesn't count what he's got in the States, but in other countries. And um, I asked him, I said, do you have graduates that really can't make the transition into ministry, especially ones that feel called a pastor? And he said, yes, he does. And so we're collaborating in this effort to the degree that when we're able to focus on a different nation, different city, uh, we can utilize his graduates who live there, know the culture as our contacts, because we will need interpreters for our teams when we get there. And, uh, and of course, you know, someone that knows that, that city and how to get permits and whatnot. And so that's the basic infrastructure of the idea. So with, the, with these contacts that we are working, and sometimes we have to send down an advance team of two or three people, but, but when we're ready, when we've got everything in place, uh, we currently operate a Falcon 50. We take eight people right now. Um, we're believing for a second airplane, a 900, we can carry 14 people. But eight right now is working for us. Uh, three teams of two, each will have an interpreter when we get there. Mm -hmm. uh, we will do the same profile. We will evangelize, witness on the streets for a week, do a large localized crusade or meeting in a facility that we can find. Uh, we will have built a building. This is part of the process. Uh, it's amazing what the American dollar will do down in other third world yes. nations. Yes. The first church we built, uh, we, we, it cost us $52,000 for a beautiful little 200 seat sanctuary and children's facilities underneath. And uh, that is a real evangelistic tool because the whole community wants to see what's happening. Yes. At any rate. So this is basically the overview and I'm talking too much. <laughs> No, uh, that's, so I mean, it's, it's a, what a, I love a, the strategy that you've put together. This is something that is clearly uh, being led by the Lord. And I can imagine that those churches and those communities become such a focal point of the whole community. I've been in many of those communities myself. And yes. to see that type of a, a church just sprout up and, and many new believers it's got to be a fantastic uh, draw to the rest of the area. It is, and it's, it's, it's interesting to me that this church building we put up, you know, always or often seems to become a community center for the local community. I mean, they use it for a lot of different things, right. but the center piece is always Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that is a powerful way to introduce somebody to the goodness of God. Yes. So, yes, uh, absolutely. Well, let me ask you about the program that we're going to be seeing on Cornerstone here that we are seeing now, Winner's Way. Could you tell us a little bit about the program and uh, uh, about what's upcoming and some of the, the episodes that we'll be seeing shortly? Well, my, my goal uh, during the Winner's Way is to preach the word, of course, mm -hmm. that will benefit the hearer whoever's listening, they'll be able to apply that word to their own life. And, and so it's important that it be a word that have that a kind of word that will have that general applicability to a person's life. But I want it to be able to connect with what I believe is God's heart for our time, for the end time church. And that is to finish the final leg of the great commission which is to make disciples of all nations. Yes. This is how a nation moves from a goat nation to a sheep nation. Mm -hmm. And this is something that is particular to the day in which we live. And so I want the message that I preach uh, on Cornerstone to be able uh, to uh, tie in to the need to plant a church mm -hmm. in, a, in a country somewhere else in the world. And, you know, so I do such things as uh, the big picture, you know, getting to the heart of God where empowerment is concerned. He empowers his high purpose. And when you're joined with that high purpose, the power of God works as it doesn't work anywhere else. He doesn't empower us to pursue a private agenda. 
So I'll yeah. do one on the big picture then. Is there not a cause? Right. You know, three or four weeks worth of messages on is there not a cause? Yes, there's a cause. You know, there's a world out there that does not know the Lord that we have the privilege of getting to. Um, yes. Then, of course, fight the good fight of faith can always be oriented toward getting the, the word of God. It's the word of faith. Getting yes. that word into the lives of people that need to know more about who they are and the time and day they're living in. Mm -hmm. um, I did another one called Focus for Effect which is a, a need to give our attention, to uh, focus our attention on the matters of God's high purpose instead of all of the distractions that uh, work on us each and every day to get us looking at something else or concerned about something else. So my goal for the broadcast, The Winner's Way, is to preach a kind of word <clears throat> that is applicable to anybody's daily challenges in life, but that can be especially tied to the need in this day and time to get churches planted around the world. Yes, yes. And that's on uh, here at Cornerstone for all of you that are watching. Cornerstone Saturdays at 1030 p.m. Pastor Mac, thank you so much. Did you ever dream when you started with those 12 people what God would be doing and where he'd be taking you all these years later? I can tell you, uh, it has been an adventure in faith. And that's what it is when you say okay to the Lord, it's true for anybody. You're going to have an adventure in faith. And that's certainly what I've had. So Absolutely. Well, again, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for the privilege of spending this time with you. God is calling you to do something significant in the earth for Him, regardless of your age, skill set, or perceived limitations. What's holding you back? When you give to support Cornerstone Television this month, let us bless you with Rick Renner's life-transforming book, Chosen by God. Every page will help you overcome your limited thinking and follow God's plan for your life. Rest assured, God has a plan, and He will thoroughly prepare you to fulfill it if you'll say yes with all your heart. This book will thrill you with the possibilities that await because you are chosen by God. Request your copy when you give by calling 888-665-4483 or donate online at ctvn.org donate. Thank you for helping us spread the gospel through life-changing programming like Rick Renner, Hope Today, Hard Questions, and more. To keep your favorite programs coming and receive Chosen by God, donate today. Earlier this week, we had the Stump the Viewer question for you, the audience. In case you missed it, here was the question. How does 2 Timothy describe the last days? And here were your choices. A, perilous, B, scary, C, supernatural, or D, confusing. Want to take a stab at the answer, Matt? Those are all actually really good <laughs> answers. I, I'd be lying if I wouldn't say that I don't think about all of those. <laughs> yes. But uh, I'm, obviously, I think it's got to be A, perilous times. That's correct. Let's the go. answer is A, perilous. Now let's see how many of you got it correct. 100%. Let's go. That's unbelievable. Okay. Okay, audience. That's awesome. Good job, guys. Now let's see who the winner of the pair of tickets to Amy Grant's concert is. Drum roll, please. Congratulations, Donna Dulkery. Way to go, Donna. Wow. You'll be notified via email how you will claim your tickets to Amy Grant's concert. Okay, okay. I love that the audience is getting in on this, Matt, yeah, and yeah, getting yeah. to experience that winning mentality, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like being victorious, but I know you have a powerful story to share with us yeah. about victorious living. Yeah, okay, so I have to share this with you guys because this just happened not too long ago at our church, but. Um, there's this powerful testimony of this lady that lives close to one of our campuses. And basically how she shares it is one morning she was just 
well, just in life, she was going through all these just depression and anxiety and the weight of life and stress, just getting to a point where these thoughts in her mind were causing her to want to commit suicide. Now, I know this sounds crazy and this sounds dark, but, but stick with me here because it's powerful. So she says one day, this overwhelming suicidal thought comes upon her. She goes into her bedroom, gets her husband's gun and has the gun in her hand ready to take the next step. And then she says in that moment, out of nowhere, she hears this voice call out to her, telling her to go to that church down the street, almost like this last bit of hope. And then so what does she do? The next day she ends up coming into the church. She sits into like the second or third row. And she said during the time worship hits, all of a sudden she gets this overwhelming, just a sense of peace and just like this lift off of her. She said right then and there, I mean, just a second during that time, all the anxiety, all the depression, all the negative suicidal thoughts just immediately left her. And she, she said she left overwhelmed mm. with this peace, this joy, and, and almost like a, a flick of the switch, everything mm. in her just changed. This is where it gets even more powerful. So she, she receives Jesus into her life, has an encounter with him in his presence. Then the following Sunday, she brings her husband and her son, and then they end up getting saved. Oh, to where now to this day, her whole entire family oh, has been you, transformed and is serving in, in the house of God. And why am I sharing this story? Because we all might be able to relate in some sense or form. I remember in my life when I hit rock bottom, an all time low, I mean, I'm getting laid off from my job. Uh, my, my parents are separating. Uh, at, at that time, my house almost burns down and I turned to everything I kind of knew how to other than God. And it left me so unfulfilled, right? It left me so hurt and broken until I had this encounter with God. It changed everything, mm -hmm. everything in my life, the way I thought, mm -hmm. the way I acted, the way I responded even to different stressful moments in my life. Mm -hmm. And I wanna encourage any of you out there watching right now, maybe you're just at this standstill point. Maybe you have questions going on. Maybe you're even on the verge of wanting to give up, to mm -hmm. give in, to quit. Can I just tell you, there is hope. And in one second, everything honestly in your life can transform and change. How does that happen? It happens by simply saying yes to Jesus, receiving Jesus into your life. I'm not saying that all of a sudden things around you might not get better immediately, but you will be able to conquer them. You will be able to see them differently because the Bible tells us that uh, he is the vine, we are the branches. And if we remain in him, then we will bear much fruit because apart from God, we can do nothing. Can I tell you, if you haven't even thought about that, it's a question that you have to ask yourself. Do you really have God in your life? Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Please take it from me. Not having the time to be able to share with you my testimony, but someone who has searched for everything else. And there was the moment I found Jesus, everything changed for me. If that's you this morning or, or this afternoon or this evening, late at night, whenever you're watching this, can I just encourage you just to say this simple prayer with me. And I believe if you do so, your life will transform from this moment forward. Just simply pray this with me. Dear Jesus, today I choose to receive you into my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life, who came, died on a cross, and defeated it so I can live in victory. Today, I choose to follow you and to never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that with us, and, and maybe you're wanting to learn a little bit more, please call us. We love to pray with you at 888 665-4483. Today is the biggest and best decision you could ever make. Angela, I truly believe that for those out there that have received Jesus in their life, this is a big deal. 
It is, and it's beautiful. I love that you shared that story, Matt, because she came to realize God was real, yes. that he was bigger than her circumstances, mm. that he was enough to keep her broken pieces together yeah. and to make her whole. And you know, Matt, I think that a lot of times when we're going about our day-to-day -day life, we don't, mm. we don't really conceive or, or get our mind wrapped around this idea that this huge God is yeah. intimately involved in our lives, yeah, but he yeah. is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's just because everything competes for our attention, yes. you know, and, and, and because of that, you start to have these doubts and thoughts. Mm -hmm. Why this? Why that? But that's what the Bible tells us, right? To lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge him. I think when we can, when we can truly get ourselves to a place like that, that's when we have peace, right? Yes. That's when we have clarity of just saying, you know what? God fights my battles. Yes. You know, I can't do this in my own ability. He truly is with me, though I, not, I might not see him. Man, he works all things out for my good. He does. He works yeah. everything out for your good. He is a God who loves you. He is a God who wrote his story on the tablet of your heart, that there is no place you can go that God won't see you. You can make your bed in the depths and he's there. You can ascend to the heights and he is with you. No matter what you're facing today, it is our desire and God's true design that you would experience victory coming and going. You may not feel like you're on the top or that you're the top dog, but God has goodness prepared before you. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know, yes. declares the Lord, that he's got plans mm -hmm. to prosper you, not to harm you, for a future and a hope. Listen, we are here for you and we love walking this journey with Jesus with you. So please reach out. Like Matt said, give us a call here or email us at prayer at ctvn.org. And before we say goodbye, we want to remind you that beginning Monday, Hope Today will now be on weekdays at 3.30 p.m., 8 p.m. and 1 a.m. Find a place to make us yours, to make yes. us at home, to, to give us space there that you may encounter Jesus and find hope from moment to moment. Listen, God does not want us to do this life alone mm. and that's why we're here with you. God is in the boat in the midst of your storm and he's with you, rooting you on and cheering you on to your greatest days. No matter how dark it might seem, remember, there is always hope today.